Ladies, welcome back. Uh, so far, we have learned to do the long tail cast on, and we have learned how to knit and purl, and now I wanna go over how to do ribbing, which is when we switch back and forth between our knits and our purls. So I have a small swatch here. On the bottom edge of my swatch down here, this is our garter stitch. And if you recall, garter stitch is what happens when you knit every single row while we're going back and forth knitting flat or it's when you purl every single row, when you go back and forth purling flat, as opposed to knitting in the round or purling in the round. The small section above this, these two couple rows here, we see we've got all of our Vs on the one side, on the right side, these Vs, see our Vs? Those Vs are the knit stitches which is our tall front of the stitch. And our purls are the bumps on the back. And your purl stitch, if you recall, is a smile and a frown. So our purl is wider than our V is taller. So when all our purls are on the back and our Vs are on the front, this is stockinette or stocking stitch. And when we alternate knits and purls, and we knit the knits and purl the purls, we get these vertical rows, these vertical textured stripes, and those are our ribs. Ribbing is usually found on the cuffs of hats, sweaters, sleeves, all kinds of stuff. Rib ribbing gives a nice stretchy edge, and also you can see it's reversible. And because there are an equal number of knits and purls, the ribbing fabric will lay flat. So how do we switch between knits and purls on the same row? Well, here I've started our ribbing on my swatch is knit to purl to, and you can tell the knits and the purls because the purls are these bumps right up against the needle and the knits are the columns of long V's. So we start with knit to purl to. When I knit flat, it is my habit to slip the first stitch either as if to knit or to purl, depending on what the first stitch happens to be. So you see, I've knit the first two stitches now to go from knitting to purling, when we knit, our yarn is in the back. Our working yarn is in the back of our work. When we purl, you need to bring the yarn then to the front and notice we're going between the two needle tips. We bring our working yarn to the front. So that way when we purl, our yarn is there in the front and then we purl. One and two. And now to switch back to knitting, we take our working yarn, we go between the two needle tips again. So our working yarn is in the back and then we knit one and two. And now we switch back to purl. We take our working yarn between the two needle tips and we are purling. There's one and Two. Okay, and so you might say, why do we have to bring the yarn between the tips? Why can't we go over the tips? Well, what happens is, if you take your working yarn, and instead of going between the tips, if you take your working yarn, you go over the tips, what you end up with is a yarn over, and a yarn over looks like this. See the diagonal? makes a diagonal strand across the top of your needle and below the yarn over you get a hole. Sometimes if you are doing lace work, you do this yarn over on purpose and you want the hole to be there as it soon becomes a decorative element. However, if you are doing ribbing, chances are you probably do not want to have that hole in the middle of your knitted fabric. Um, if you perchance make a yarn over by mistake, on the subsequent row, you can just slip the yarn over off of the needle and to get rid of it. Or if you notice, oh shoot, I made a mistake. I did a yarn over. Put the yarn over back. So if you notice, oh shoot, I made a mistake. I have this yarn over here with this hole below and I don't want it there. You can do what we call tinking. That's T-I-N-K which is knit spelled backwards. And we call it tinking 
because you are unknitting. To unknit, you pull on the working yarn and you see where it pulls out of the stitch. Take your left hand needle, insert it into the stitch out of which the working yarn is coming and then you simply slide the stitch off of your needle. Now we can remove the yarn over and move the yarn from the front to the back and we can do our knit stitch the way we wanted to do it originally as part of our pattern. So we've done our two knits, take our yarn between the two stitches and now we do our two purls. And we're going to continue doing our knit knit purl purl to the end of our row. Bring the yarn between the two needles, purl, and purl, and knit, and knit. And then we get to the end of the row, and then you say, oh geez, so what do we do on the next row? How do I know what stitch I'm supposed to make? Well, since now you can identify the difference between your knits and your purls, your knitting will then tell you what to do on the following row. So we turn our knitting around and you can take a close look and you can see, oh, I have bumps right here up against my needle. So that means those two stitches are purls. And I do not have bumps on the following two stitches, so those are knits. So I'm gonna purl the two purl stitches and then I will knit the two knit stitches and so on, purl, purl, knit, knit, purl, purl, knit, knit, all the way across my row. And that's all there is to ribbing. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and happy stitching.